Hello. Today we're working on the last activity in the logical operators chapter of Learn to Code 1. And this activity uh, says it's a challenge and we're to use logical operators and conditional code to move through the puzzle world. And if you notice here up in the upper left, we've got uh, zero out of seven gems collected, so we still need to collect seven gems and only one of the six switches are toggled on, so we'll need to toggle on five more switches. And just a reminder what these logical operators are, um, we've looked at three of them, and they're really the, uh, the main three that there will be in any uh, programming project you have. You can use any of these three. Remember the not operator, it's uh, in Swift, it's represented by the exclamation mark, and if you put that bang symbol or exclamation mark in front of any logical value or Boolean value, it will re it invert the, the Boolean value from true to false or false to true. And the AND operator, which is two ampersands, will combine two different uh, conditions and only runs the code if both the conditions are true. If either of the conditions are false, they will not run. Uh, if either or both are false, it will not. Uh, it will not. The condition will not be true. Uh, so then, the OR operator combines two conditions and runs the code inside the braces if at least one of them are true. Okay. So let's take a look at this puzzle today. Uh, the puzzle. It looks like Byte needs to move in. Um, there's sort of this main path that moves in a U shape here. Uh, right here's the uh, U shape. He goes forward for a while, he'll turn left, he'll move forward for a while, then he'll turn left. And it looks like there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight move forwards he'll have to do. And on each of those, there are some, well, not each of them, but most of them, there are some configuration of switches and gems that he'll have to deal with. All right, the problem here, not a problem, but one thing we need to worry about are these little uh, diversions off the main path that Byte will have to take to go collect these gems on the side. So this gem, for example, here, this one, and this one, um, are all two away from the main path. They're two tiles away from the main path. So Byte will have to leave the main path at times and go get those gems that are two away. So um, let's, let's go ahead and, uh, since we know we're going to have to do that, let's just get that out of the way, write the code to do that so that we have this abstract idea that says uh, go collect gems off to the side. Okay. So that's a good, uh, good, uh, good candidate for a function here. Go collect gems off to side. And once we have this function written, we can just say then in our main code, uh, whenever something is true, we'll go collect gems off to the side. But we won't even worry about when we're going to run that right now. Let's just write the function. Okay. So we're going to do kind of what we usually do here and. Um, we'll be facing down the main path, and we want to write the code that, uh, in this case, turns to the right, moves uh, to, collects the gem, comes back to the main path, and ends up facing the way he was facing when he left. Okay? All right, so let's pretend we're on this, uh, this uh, tile right here with the switch and the gem, and we're going to turn right to go get that gem. We're going to move forward one, move forward two. We'll collect that gem. Okay, we'll collect that gem and then we'll turn around. Turn around. We'll have to write that function in a minute. And then we'll move back to, we'll do these two in a for loop for i in one to two. Move forward. And then remember, we need to end up facing the direction we were when we left. So that's going to be a turn right. Okay, that's going to be a turn right. Now, 
uh, at least on this one, in fact, let's look at the puzzle here because it looks like uh, every time we need to leave the main path and go collect the gems off to the side, well, one place is right here, and there's a switch that is closed and a gem there. Then another place we need to do it is right up here. There's also a closed switch and a gem there. And the last place we have to do it here, turn right and go off the main path and collect this gem, is right here. In all those cases, there's a closed switch and a gem. In fact, those are the only places on the main path that have the closed switch and the gem. So that gives us an idea that that kind of a tile, a tile with a closed switch and a gem on it, will be our indicator to go collect the gems off to the side. Okay, So we can do that in our main program here. We'll be moving forward, and after we move forward, we can say, if the tile we're on is on a gem, and it has a closed switch on it, and it has it's on a closed switch then we want to go collect the gems off to the side okay, go collect the gems off to the side now um, also we should deal with the toggle the switch and the gem that are on that square okay uh, because we know that you know not only are the switch the closed switch and the gem being used to indicate that's when we need to go collect that gem off to the side, but there are also things we need to deal with in order to solve the puzzle. So we could, at this point, after we come back from going and collecting the gem off to the side, we could do this in here. We could say toggle switch and collect gem as well, which would handle this, right? We could put this all in here, collect gem and toggle switch. But the other thing we could do is we could just put those two things right in our function up there. Okay, uh, because that's going to happen every time we go collect gems off to the side. So I think that sounds like a reasonable thing to do. Then it'll get it out of our main program here, and it'll just be part of the idea of going to collect gems off to the side. So I'll cut these out of here, cut, and after we turn right and we're facing these, let's just go ahead and uh, we could do that anywhere in here, either at the beginning or the end. I'm going to choose to do it at the end. Okay, and let's not forget we've got a red dot here, which is just saying that we haven't written our turnaround function yet. So, func turnaround, and let's just do a couple of turn rights here. Turn right and turn right. Okay. Um, we could try this just to make sure this works. Not a bad idea. Now, I'm not going to move forward 8 here. I'm just going to check that it works on the square right ahead of us here. So let's change this for loop so that he only moves forward 1 and does the move forward and checks if he's on a gem and on a closed switch, which he will be. He'll go collect gems off to the side. This is just a test to see if this function is working uh, okay. Let's run the code. It's going to go collect the gem off to the side. Collect gem, turn around, move forward two, turn to the right, and then collect the gem and toggle the switch that he's on. Okay, good. Uh, so far, so good. Now that should work uh, every time we get to one of these squares with a closed switch and a gem. Uh, that should work just fine now. Okay. Now, other things we need to do. Well, um, we can't just keep moving forward in this for loop because we'll hit this wall up ahead here. At some point, we need to turn left here, and then we need to come uh, up here, and we need to also turn left right here. Okay, so how can we indicate that we're going to do that? Well, one way we could say right here, if we're blocked, then I want to turn to the left. Okay. Uh, but up here, that won't work because we won't be blocked in front when we get to here. And so we won't turn left there. 
Um, we could say if we're on a closed switch, we can turn. Uh, that would work because if we're on a closed switch here, we'll need to turn left. And if we're on a closed switch here, uh, we'll need to turn left. So that would work just fine. Let's go ahead and say right here we're checking if we're on a gem and we're on a closed switch. And let's say else if else if we are on a closed just on a closed switch okay else if we are just on a closed switch this has to be part of this is on closed switch we want to turn to the left that's going to turn to the left let's change our for loop back to eight here okay Okay, looking good. What should we do if we're on this open switch here, though? Probably nothing. We don't need to do anything, right? But we could do some more practice here. So let's practice and say, else if we is on an open switch, uh, then we want to do a dance. Okay, and let's make a byte do a dance here. So we can write a function, do dance. And our dance is, let's spin all the way around and then let's jump up in the air and pretend we're toggling a switch or something like that. So uh, for i in one, two, four, turn right. That will spin him all the way around and then we can't toggle the switch because that'll turn it to off or to closed and we need it to stay on so let's just say collect gem even though there's no gem there he'll jump up in the air as the ending part of his dance there okay this looks like a good time to try it we need to try out to see if we're on a closed switch if we'll turn to the left and if that makes us get through the puzzle so let's go ahead and run this okay he's found a closed switch and a gem, so he's going off to the side to collect a gem. Coming back, going to turn the way he was before, collect the gem, toggle the switch. Now he's going to come up here, do his dance, spin around, a little jump at the end. Uh, good. Okay, we turn to the left. That's good. Uh, here we found a gem and a switch, so we're going to move off to the side, collect the gem come back and then collect the gem and the switch toggle the switch come here it needs to turn to the left okay good uh, okay we didn't collect that gem so we need to remember to do that we'll come back up here toggle the switch and collect the gem Good. Well, he made it all the way to the end. We still have one gem to collect, this one right here, and we have two switches to collect, these two over here. So these two switches are going to be uh, fairly easy because we already have in here a condition that says if we're on a closed switch, we turn left. Okay. Remember, you can do uh, any number of things inside one of these blocks inside the curly braces if you've got a condition that's true. In this case, is on a closed switch is true and we're turning left, we can also, maybe right after we turn to the left, let's go ahead and toggle the switch. So we can do more than one thing inside a conditional statement like an else if, if, if the condition is true. In this case, we'll turn left and toggle the switch. Now to handle this gem, this gem is all by itself, so we need another else if clause in here to detect when we're just on a uh, on a gem else if is on gem all by ourself uh, on a gem we'll just collect the gem okay so notice how this is very different than this up here this requires both the is on gem and is cl uh, on closed switch before we go do go collect gems off to the side so both of these things, this and this, need to be true before we go do this. In this case, if only the is on gem is true, 
we will go ahead and collect the gem. Okay. All right, let's uh, go ahead and give this a try. I have a good feeling about this. I'm going to run this one and step through my code so we can watch the functions get called here. So move forward. Now we're going to call go collect gems off to the side function. Move, move forward, move forward, collect gem, turn around gets called. And then there's a move forward, move forward twice in a for loop and then turn right to get us back facing, and then collect gem and toggle switch. Now they're off to an open switch, and we're going to call do dance. So he's going to do his dance. Turn to the right in a for loop four times. Number three, number four, and then collect gem. And now let's see if this works. We're on a closed switch, so we're both going to turn left and toggle the switch before we go back to our for loop and move forward. Good, nothing's true here. So we're gonna check all those conditions and then just go back and do nothing before we move forward. Okay, here we're gonna call go collect gems off to the side. Bytes heading back and he'll turn right. And we know this next one should work because we've already had a condition where we were on a closed switch alone. There it is. Turn left and toggle the switch. This one we haven't seen yet. So are we on a gem and closed switch? No, but down here we are on a gem. So we just collect it. And then finally up here, we are on both a gem and a closed switch. So we call go collect gems off to the side and byte does his thing. Okay, there it is, the last switch. Okay, so that's it for the uh, logical operators chapter. Um, you can go back and review uh, the description of these up here if you're not quite clear on what a not, an and, and an or operator do. The and and the or, remember, combine two conditions and uh, check if, you know, one of them is true or more in the or operator then the combination will be true. And in the end, both of the conditions need to be true for the combination to be true, and not just inverts the value from true to false and false to true, okay? So it's a good time here to just sort of think because we're gonna be moving on to the while loops chapter here. So uh, look at this code and look at your code and um, you know take a good look at it. And it's a good time to reflect on how much you've learned and how hard you worked. Uh, during this period. So, you know, your code doesn't have to look like mine. Um, get it to work. That's great. Um, just, you know, take a take a minute and look at it and maybe go back to the beginning few uh, lessons in the Learn to Code and take a look at how simple your code was and just admire how hard you worked and how much you learned in, in this amount of time before we go on to while loops. Okay. All right. I'll see you in while loops. Uh, see you next time.